A very good evening to you. Um, Ola Afalabi, a man who is burning with ambition to get another crack at a world title. He wants Marco Captain Hook again. Terry Dunstan, as you've heard, he says if he doesn't win, he's going to pack up. Sparks could fly. 12 rounder Afalabi, 31 years old, 11 years. Terry Dunstan's junior. Fighting Dunstan, though, can be heavy handed. Here's the introduction. WBO Intercontinental Champion Ola Afalabi. Ich darf Ihnen beide Boxer ausführlich vorstellen. Zunächst Terry Dunstan. Er ist 42 Jahre jung und brachte beim offiziellen Wien anlässlich dieses Championship Bouts 90 Kilogramm, 27 Kämpfe, 24 Siege, 14 Mal durch K.O. 27 Bouts, 24 Wins, 14 by Knockout. 42 years young, 90 kilograms from London, fighting out of the blue corner, Terry Dunstan. The reigning and defending WBO Intercontinental Champion, 21 bouts, 60 wins, 7 by knockout. 31 years young, 90.5 kilograms. He fights out of London here in Hamburg. Coming from the red corner, Ola Afolabi. The three judges, ladies and gentlemen, the three Pontrichter scoring this bout will be Mrs. Adelaide Bird from the United States, Michael Pernick, USA, and Frank Michael Maas from Germany. And when the bell rings, ladies and gentlemen, the men in charge of the action on this 12-round cruiserweight bout for the WBO Intercontinental Championship will be Stanley Christodoulou from South Africa. Right, let's go. Thank you. Good, thank you. Stanley Christodoulou, vastly right experienced both the referee. Fight, check games. Good luck to you both. Refereed his world title fight for the first time back in 1973. Now Afalabi on paper here should emerge victorious, but Dunstan, a former British and European champion who's had his career interrupted by a spell of more than five years in jail. He has well, really put his career on the line here, Jim. Yeah, well, this is a massive opportunity for Dunstan. I don't know if he would have believed uh, when he resumed his career they would get an opportunity like this. I mean, believe it or not, this is one step away from a world title challenge. I mean, he does have an excellent record. That he's only lost three fights. He, he's a good fighter. He was on a roll all those years ago. So, obviously, his body hasn't been abused over the last number of years. So, he's fit enough and fresh enough to make this comeback. But this is a difficult job for him. Dunstan in the green shorts, 42 years old, certainly looks in good shape. Interesting fight this one as a warm-up for the crowd and you can hear the chants going up in the background. A real buzz of anticipation around this big, big stadium. I mean, Athol Abbey has done a fair bit of sparring for a living during his career, but what he has done at the same time is learned the business inside and out. He knows perfectly how to, to pace a fight, when to work, when to back off. And he, he does have a decent technique, he's not normally the most exciting in the world, but it's nice to hear him say before this one that he also wants to look good as well as winning. And they're, uh, you know, they're facing off straight from the opening bell here, which is encouraging. I saw him fight back in March on the undercard of Vitaly Klitschko against Odlania Solis. Not to Declan, won yeah. Luba Suda of the Czech Republic. Yes, it was. Eight-round draw. Afalabi, the slightly the taller man although well, both the first round was being was six where foot three the ties happened uh, first round and then you could go uh, well Dunstan holding his own in the opening session here standing his ground a lot of these jabs are just slightly out of range as you have to expect with a guy as slippery as Afalabi not much in the, the opener, not much to split them at all. So, so far, still have uh, 50 seconds to go, so nothing dramatic happening. This is better from Dunstan, just getting a little bit closer. Started well, Jim David. He beat David Dolan to yeah, sorry, win the off. English title in Houghton the Spring in December. 
It's seven and eight. We're well, he okay. started here with a bit of confidence, but this is better now from Afalabi. Should have had a little bit of damage on his left eye. Oh, what a punch that was! That's a finisher. Great right hand, terrific right hand, and Terry Dunstan is not going to get up from that one. It's going to be all over in this opening round, and the referee has waved it over. And what a peach of a shot that was from Ola Afalabi. They say he's not a noted puncher. Well, tell Terry Dunstan, and what a terrific punch that was. Well, Dunstan already had his eye cut with the first real assault of the fight. But that finishing punch, it really was a peach caught him bang on the chin, he's badly stunned. He wants the typical of a fighter, he wants to get back on his feet, but they want to get the stool out here, they're bringing the stool now. If he doesn't want to lie in the canvas, I don't blame him for that, but get the stool under him, sit him down. He is badly stunned, he is nowhere near recovered. See, if they want to get him on his feet, this is dangerous, he could end up falling over again. That's how they have him on his stool now, thankfully, but what a shocking punch that was, that was over as soon as that punch landed. Well, over Ola Afalabi in the first round then, getting the win he wanted, and he now lines himself up, maybe, for that world title rematch against Marco Hook. Tremendous punch it was in the corner, Dunstan getting treatment, the cheers in the background, as the fans watch a, a replay on the big screens above the ring and a tremendous shot it was, here it is Yeah well I was just saying he's holding his own if nothing dramatic happened from now at the end of the round it's a good opener and then <laughs> it couldn't have been any more dramatic look at that punch, bang on, knocked the gum shield straight out of his mouth and as soon as that punch landed you knew it was over terrific punch, couldn't have landed on the, the, the sweet spot any better and you see the gum shield, you know, spraying from his mouth. But just the way he stepped in with the punch, got his full body weight behind it. Boom. That is the punch from an experienced fighter. Afalabi's been sparring with Vladimir Klitschko. Well, if he's landed anything like that, it'll have tested Klitschko's chin. Yep, not half. And he did say before the fight it wasn't enough to, to win tonight. He wanted to look good. He wants to make himself more of an attraction and they get another crack at the World Championship, maybe he feels he didn't uh, perform as well as he could have done, but that, without question, was a world-class punch. Marco Hook, the WBO champion, due to defend his title in Munich next month against Hugo Garay of Argentina, and he came through a really tight split-decision victory defending back in December against Denis Lebedev of Russia, Ola Afalabi, well, for my money, he looks absolutely ready to have another crack. Yeah, well, what a confidence builder that was. I don't know if they want to keep him busy. I mean, I don't know how soon he can expect to step back into a world title fight. As I say, he didn't really shine in his previous efforts, so I don't expect the promoters will be queuing up. But you get your hands on the, inter the WBO Intercontinental title as a stepping stone, and it gives you the right for yet another crack at the world title. Thankfully, Terry is OK now. He's communicating well. But what a shocking punch that was he had to take. Well, Afalabi being trained by Fritz Sudanek nowadays, who's the man who looks after Vitaly Klitschko, and clearly enjoying that relationship. He's looked very happy and relaxed around the Klitschko camp this week, and showing that he's sharp indeed. Yeah, and the confidence that it must give you when you're dealing with uh, Klitschko's punches. But, I mean, he knows how to look after himself at Afalabi. He's learned the game properly, he knows every aspect of it, when to attack, when to defend you know, when to go into a shell when to take some chances and he looked as though he was just having a look at Dunstan in the opening round, he had already cut his eye with the first attack but then slips the lead and comes in with a punch like that without doubt, a real world class shot and thankfully Terry Dunstan, as we're speaking here he's gone over, they've cuddled each other he's ok again and what a terrific punch that was Winner by knockout after 2 minutes and 40 seconds of the first round and still the reigning WBO intercontinental champion from London, Ola Afolabi.
Al Afalabi taking the applause of the crowd. Good to see Terry Dunstan back on his feet as well after that brutal first round knockout defeat. Ola Afalabi celebrating with his team. An explosive way to start the night. Um, that was a good way to make a statement on a huge stage, Lennox Lewis. This is where you make the statement and he threw that punch correctly and lights out. Didn't have to wait, wait, wait till the judges get in. Yeah, Marco Huck, um, he sort of, he, he was disappointing against Marco. Although he pushed the world him title fight, for the yeah. world title fight, he didn't look great. But um, you know, he uh, he reintroduced himself there with that one right hand. And let's not forget, Terry Dunson's 43 years old, spent a bit of time away, and has come back. But uh, a guy's chin at 43, and I'm sure you'll agree, Lennox, isn't as good as a young guy's. So, uh, but nevertheless, what a clinical finish that was! Absolutely spectacular. That right hand was brilliant, and we know that he's been sparring with uh, Vladimir Klitschko, so he'll be prepared because a similar right hand, Lennox, or sorry, Lennox, David here throws as well. So, well, he through a longer one than, than you yeah but it's a, it's a similar sort of counter right hand so um, you can be sure that he's been preparing very hard for that it was a, a brutal brutal finish Johnny he actually caught him about five or ten seconds before that shot and Terry tried to to, to kid uh, kid his way through it but then he, he, he sensed he hurt and came back again finished him very clean very clinical let's hear from Ola Afalabi a ringside right now Ola Afalabi, always a pleasure to see you, and I bet you're a very, very happy man. Your quickest win ever on the biggest stage. Yeah, man, I guess uh, not being lazy works out, huh? <laughs> um, I worked hard for this fight. Two weeks before this fight, my shoulder came out for the first time, and I've been working with these guys, Andy Lee and, like, Emmanuel Stewart and my trainer, Fitz Stunick. They've been telling me to just relax and rest my arm. So for the last two weeks, I didn't do any sparring or working out. But those rounds with Klitschko got me in shape, so, you know, I worked hard and here I am. Is that the one shot that's going to take you to a world title and make you a world champion for Britain a bit? <laughs> that's what they said when I landed the same shot against Enzo and it got to my head. I'm going back into the factory and I'm working twice as hard and hopefully this will put me on the background to fight Enzo, uh, not Enzo, uh, was it Marco Hook again or Ledbedev, whoever they want. I, tr I believe in my power now and I got the condition to fight, so we'll do it. Ola, quick prediction for the big fight. I say from seven, within one to seven, Klitschko. Thanks, Ola.